Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a very quick and somewhat dirty quick camera tracking without complicated setup. It's going to take a little bit of time but you don't need to do all the manual marker placement. So the, t the software we're going to use today is Joset's PostShot. This is a commercial software but you can register a free account. The other one is a Blender plugin for importing photogrammetry formats. The video we're going to take a look at today is this one. It's a kitchen scene with very simple static objects, and we're going to try to place a digital object inside this basket. I'm not going to do very fancy rendering, but you can add your stuff after you have the camera tracking set up. So the first thing we're going to do is to convert this video into a bunch of images. We're going to use Blender for that. I'm going to do a new video editing thing and drag this here. And make sure I set the correct frame range. I'm just going to use a movie clip editor, so it's slightly easier. I'm just going to put this in here and do a set, set and do a, and uh, that's pretty much all we need, right? So we have the whole range. And then let's go to the optical folder. Let me pick a folder here. Let's do images and uh, accept. And I'm going to make sure I select PNG as output. The rest should be fine. You can change the compression if you want. And that's it. Let's do rendering the animation. It's going to take a bit. And we are going to get a whole bunch of images corresponding to the entire frame range. So notice we have how many? 327 frames. So after this is done, we're going to have 327 images inside this folder. Let's just wait a bit for it to finish. After it's done, we are going to use the JawSet PostShot. When you first log in, we first open the program, it's going to ask you to log in. But after that, it's pretty much very straightforward. You just need to drop in all your files and do some basic configuration, and it will generate the entire photogrammetry scene for you. Okay, so now we have all the images. I'm going to just uh, select everything drop it here and then here make sure we use all of the ranges and then pick let's do this one and then we can make it smaller if we want let's do just to make it faster so the input image is 4k but we are actually for the purpose of training just use uh, 1200 as the resolution all right and then we can stop after 30k steps i'm going to import this one and it's going to immediately start doing processing. I'm going to disable all the visualizations so there's no overhead from the GPU side and the, the GPU can just focus on doing all the necessary training and stuff. And this step is going to take a while. So I am going to pause the video and come back later. All right, now we are done. We can take a look at the result. You can click those buttons to show the point cloud and the Gaussian field. You can use your mouse button to zoom in, zoom out, and pan, rotate. If you double click on a point, you can center your canvas around that position. Because we intentionally didn't capture all around the object, if you rotate above the camera angle, you will not see perfect mapping but that should be fine from the perspective of the camera. This entire generation process took about one hour, and I believe it can be cut short if you skip the Gaussian radiance field calculation part. But for our purpose, it is fine, because you can take this time to go out, buy grocery, and wear back. The camera tracking is already done for you. Let's take a look at the camera tracking part. So here you have an image set. If you go to Actions, you can create a camera. And here, it creates an image set camera. If you go to the image set camera, you are looking from the perspective of the image. If you go to the first frame and just play through it, you can see the virtual camera is working almost perfectly corresponding to the actual camera, right? So that is exactly what we want. To 
further process it, we are going to go to select, select the image set, export the code map database. And here I have already exported it once. So select this folder and uh, select the folder. That will export the code map database. So if you go, go inside, you can see that is the database. That's all we need from PostShot. And moving forward, we are going to work in Blender. So let's open a new Blender session. And if you haven't installed the photogrammetry alum, you can click this button install from disk, and you will pick the zip file you downloaded from the website and install it. Here, make sure you have go here and install those dependent libraries. I have already installed it, but I don't know there's some problem in UI issue, so it's not showing up. So but let's ignore that. After that, if you go to import, you can see you can import from the code map database. What we are going to do is to find the folder and just pick this folder. In order to see the actual footage, we are going to specify the image directory. That's why we saved everything as an image before. So if we go to the image directory, copy the path, and paste it here. And also check suppress distortion warnings so you don't see a bunch of arrows. Warnings, not arrows. So import and you should see this result. The point cloud is here. If you find the proper angle, you can even kind of see you know all the shapes. And then all of those highlighted ones are the cameras. We don't need those cameras because the import add-on also imported an animated camera right here. So I'm just going to select all the cameras and delete them. So that's the result we have here. Now the orientation is a bit weird. To fix that, what we can do is to select all the objects and make sure the OpenGL point cloud is the active object, then control P to create a parent. Then we can select the OpenGL point cloud and the navigate it, or I mean rotate it to a way that you know works well for our purpose. So I'm just going to rotate it around, GZ a bit and then move it around. So I'm sure I'm just going to try to make the um, the basket our focus because that's where we're going to place a virtual object. So that's the orientation here, right? So if we find the animated camera, we can make it as the active camera. Control zero, so it's the active camera. If you hide the sky and then just uh, play the animation, you can see it, it moves perfectly. Right, good. So we have saved a whole bunch of, of effort setting up our own markers and doing all the camera tracking inside Blender. And you know, just wait a bit of time and you have this perfect setup. To, to finish the demonstration, I'm going to import, sorry, I'm going to link an object I downloaded. So it's an Apple mat, it's an Apple model I downloaded from Blender Swap. I'm just going to link it, find the collection, and it's, it's right there. So I'm going to make it bigger, like this, and even bigger, something like that. All right, so it almost works. So it's right here. If we show the point cloud, it's sitting inside. Well, it looks like a huge apple. I'm not going to, you know, bother setting up a perfect example. So I'm just going to nudge it around, so we don't need to make an oc occluder for the edge of the basket. So it's uh, sitting somewhere here. And I'm just going to try to nudge it nicely so it actually sits down like that. Show us this side, show it sit down a bit more. And that's good, right? So that's our apple right here. And then we can do a quick render. Let's do uh, cycles. I'm going to add a, I'm not going to set up the perfect light, I'm just going to add an error li light put it towards the source of the window, which is somewhere here, make it bigger, GZ, adjust the angle a bit more, and uh, we are good, um, good, let's render it, see what it looks like, we have the apple, looks like it's not bright enough, I'm just going to uh, go to render view, hide the point cloud, and uh, make it very bright, uh, okay, is it affecting my thing at all? Okay, way brighter, right? So, look like a single lamp is not enough. I'm just going to add another one to compensate the lighting a bit more. 
Right, make it slightly dimmer. Okay, good. Good. All right, good. So now if we go to camera view, we see an apple right here. And if we bring back the the background, you see it's sitting right there, right? So from there, we can make a render. I'm going to use the GPU render. Go to start it, F12. And you can see that's our apple right here, right? So you can do a quick composition to add the the rest of the stuff, but basically you get the idea. So let's see very quick setup of camera tracking without doing too much manually and you can from there you can add your objects and have fun. Thank you for watching.